welcome to AM Weather's Christmas Special. I'm Joan Von Ahn, here with Carl Weiss and Wayne Winston. We get a lot of questions about our program, especially the maps and weather symbols. So today, instead of presenting today's weather as we normally do, we're going to show you each of our maps and explain their meaning. We'll follow our usual format. We start the program with our satellite segment, showing the jet stream with the weather trends and highlights of the last 24 hours by going through several motion sequences. Next, we move to our radar segment, where we show a motion sequence, and if the weather warrants, a regional radar depiction. We end with the national map, showing current weather, high and low pressure centers, fronts and isobars. Then it's on to the forecast segment to see how things shape up for the future. Our specialty segments present agricultural and aviation information. Finally, we have Weather Watch, a segment highlighting dangerous or potentially dangerous weather. Now, for a closer look at satellites and radar, let's go to Wayne. Weather satellites 22,300 miles above the Earth send pictures of the Earth in its clouds. This actually allows us to watch the weather develop. We start by showing the location of the jet stream and how it relates to the current weather. Next, we have a satellite motion sequence showing weather trends. Closer to home, a corresponding 24-hour U.S. motion sequence allows us to review the significant weather happenings around the nation. Occasionally, we also use close-up views around the country and into the tropics to highlight important weather events. When appropriate, we will color enhance the high and middle clouds in our satellite imagery to illustrate where severe weather has occurred. Next, we go to the radar segment. Frequently, when there is an important precipitation occurrence, we use a regional NOWRAD composite from several National Weather Service radar sites. These images are color-coded to show intensity. The latest national radar summary follows. We often animate this to show precipitation movement, development, or dissipation. Areas of precipitation are also shown by varied colors with shades of red and yellow indicating the most intense precipitation. Precipitation tops are depicted by a number with the final two zeros left off. The example 200 is 20,000 feet. Arrows show the direction of precipitation movement. We end this satellite segment with our national map, which depicts current weather. We use a relief map of the United States with mountains, valleys, lakes, rivers, and plains. We show the topography because it often plays a role in why certain weather occurs in certain locations. The most basic information on our national map is the location of centers of high and low atmospheric pressure. A high indicated by a blue capital letter H usually means fair weather and light winds. Low pressure areas noted by a capital, red capital L, usually have rising air, cloudiness, and very often precipitation. Isobars, or lines of equal barometric pressure, are shown by thin white lines. Isobars give us clues to the strength of weather systems and the direction of low-level winds. The boundaries between different air masses are called fronts. Fronts indicate a contrast in temperature, humidity, and very often wind direction. A cold front is shown as a blue line with blue spikes. These spikes are pointed in the direction the cold front is moving. A warm front is shown in red with red bumps, also in the direction the front is moving. Occluded fronts are shown by a purple line with alternating purple bumps and spikes. The final type of front is a stationary front, which marks the boundary between warm and cold air nearly in balance. This front appears as alternating red and blue segments with the bumps and spikes pointing in opposite directions. When a front is developing or weakening, we often depict it as a trough. A trough is a zone of low atmospheric pressure and often marks a shift in wind direction and or speed. Troughs are shown on our national map as a gray dashed line. So there you have it, high and low pressure, isobars, warm, cold, occluded and stationary fronts, and troughs. Precipitation areas are shaded green for rain, gray for snow, and blue for freezing rain or sleet. Areas of fog, haze, or smoke are indicated by yellow shading. The following are the standard weather symbols for precipitation. Two dots for light steady rain, two snowflakes for light continuous snow, two commas for drizzle. The rain shower symbol is a rain dot with an inverted triangle underneath. A snowflake with that same inverted triangle is our symbol for snow flurries. The block T with a lightning bolt symbolizes a thunderstorm. Horizontal yellow lines are for fog. And finally, the lazy eight indicates haze. That's the national weather map. 
Up until now, we've looked only at the past and present weather, but beginning with the forecast segment of our program, we look into the future. We begin with a series of forecast maps of weather expected around the country. Monday through Wednesday, we have three forecast maps showing the weather expected for the next 60 hours. But on Thursdays and Fridays, we take an extended look at the weekend weather with an 84-hour forecast. On our forecast maps, the highs, lows, fronts, and troughs are symbolized the same way as on our national map. Areas of precipitation are depicted in three different shades. Green for rain, gray for snow, and blue for freezing rain. More intense shading indicates a better than 50% chance of precipitation, while the lighter shades indicate only a 30 to 50% chance. In this example, snow gives way to freezing rain, rain, and drizzle. We follow the forecast maps with our temperature forecasts. Today's high temperatures are followed by tomorrow's projected highs. Next, we show tonight's low temperatures and then wrap up the segment with the following night's lows. All temperatures are shown in 10 degree Fahrenheit intervals. The colored shading helps to distinguish these areas. Each morning, we lead off the agricultural segment of our program with a map showing the amount of precipitation expected around the country during the upcoming 24 hours. Areas shown in light green are forecast to have at least one quarter inch of precipitation. Progressively darker shades of green correspond to precipitation amounts of one half inch, one inch, two inches, and so forth. Where snow is expected to be the significant precipitation type, a white shading is shown. We also routinely show extended outlooks for temperature and precipitation. These range from five day to 90 day and are expressed in terms of above or below normal. Temperatures are shown in oranges for warm areas and blues for cool regions, while precipitation categories are displayed in shades of green. Some maps show depend in part upon the season. For example, during the growing season, we have the crop moisture chart. Brown areas indicate very dry soil, green areas very moist or wet soil. In the winter, we have the snow cover chart, the shaded area showing a trace or more of snow on the ground. Numbers indicate snow depths in inches.